discussing net ionic equations. Net ionic equations are a little bit different than chemical equations. A net ionic equation represents just the precipitate in the double replacement reaction. We're representing the precipitate with the net ionic equation because really only the precipitate is going through a chemical change. The rest of that chemical equation is known as spectator ions, which are gonna be removed from the chemical equation. They remain dissolved the entire time and they do not undergo a chemical change. So since they do not change chemically, we remove them from a net ionic equation. To write a net ionic equation, we follow some steps. First, write the balanced chemical equation. This is the same way we've always done it. After that, you need to look using your solubility rules at each of the reactants and products and classify them as aqueous or solid based on solubility. Everything that's aqueous is gonna be broken apart into its respective ions. The solid, since it does not dissociate, is going to remain together. After we've written the equation and broken apart our aqueous solutions into ions, uh, we're going to look at both sides of the equation, the reactant side and the product side, to see what's exactly the same. Anything that's exactly the same is removed and classified as a spectator ion. Anything that remains in the equation is part of the net ionic equation. So we're going to go through an example. If silver nitrate reacts with sodium carbonate, uh, we're gonna write a net ionic equation for that reaction. So again, this starts with writing the balanced chemical equation. We also need to go and look through everything, um, thinking about solubility rules, and classify each reactant and product as aqueous if it's soluble, and solid if it's insoluble. So first, we need to write the formula for silver nitrate. So silver has a charge of positive one, and nitrate has a charge of negative one. Those two things cancel each other out, the charges are balanced, so no additional subscripts are necessary. The formula for silver nitrate is AgNO3. We follow the same process when we're writing the formula for sodium carbonate. We need to look at the charges of sodium and carbonate. Sodium has a positive one charge, carbonate has a negative two charge. Since positive one and negative two are not balanced, we need to crisscross our charges. I'm going to need to move that 2 to the sodium and make it a subscript. If I double the amount of sodium, that gives me two positives, and that will cancel out the two negatives from carbonate. So the correct formula for sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. When they react, this is a double replacement reaction, so the silver and the sodium are going to switch places. When sodium now forms a compound with nitrate, sodium's positive one charge and nitrate's negative one charge balance. So the correct formula for the sodium nitrate product is NaNO3. When silver is going to bond to carbonate, silver keeps its positive one charge and carbonate keeps its negative two charge. However, those do not balance. So again, we need to double the amount of silver. We need to crisscross. And so I'm going to need a subscript of 2 after silver symbol in that formula. So the correct formula for that product is Ag2CO3. So now I need to place my reactants on the reactant side of the equation and products on the product side of the equation and use coefficients to balance if necessary, which it was. We needed two silvers on the reactant side and we needed um, the two sodiums and the two nitrates on the product side. So coefficient of two were placed in front of the, that reactant and that product. Using solubility rules, we go through and determine what's aqueous and what's solid. So some of the solubility rules that are real easy to remember uh, is that anything with an alkali metal, such as sodium, is going to be aqueous. So the sodium compound on the reactant and on the product side are both aqueous. Also, anything that contains nitrate is aqueous. So the silver nitrate on the reactant side is aqueous. So your alkali metals and nitrate are always aqueous, and th those are probably the best two to remember. The silver carbonate on the product side is going to be solid. Carbonate is an insoluble ion, so that means it does not dissolve. It'll only dissolve when bonded to an alkali metal, which on the product side it's not. It's bonded to silver. So silver carbonate is going to be the solid precipitate that forms during this reaction. 
The next step after we've written our chemical equation and classified everything as aqueous or solid is to go through and break apart our aqueous compounds into their respective anions and cations. The solid, since it does not dissolve, is not going to be broken apart by water. So we're not going to break it up into ions when we do this step. So here was my balanced chemical equation from the first step. I know that I need to break apart silver and nitrate. I need to break apart sodium and carbonate. I'm going to leave silver carbonate alone on the product side, but I'm going to break apart sodium and nitrate. Now when we do this step, it's really important to recognize that we're not going to break everything up into elements. Instead, we're going to break it up into the ions that form those compounds. So notice that my silver nitrate is broken up into two silver ions and two nitrate ions. I used coefficients to represent the fact that I had two of them in that compound. I do the same thing for the sodium carbonate. I break apart the two sodiums. That subscript of two is going to become a coefficient because those two sodiums are not going to stick together when they dissociate in water. The water molecules are going to break them apart into separate sodium ions. However, the carbon and oxygen that make up carbonate, they will stay together because that carbonate ion is one single molecule with a charge. It's not going to break apart into carbon and oxygen. So watch those polyatomic ions. If you notice that something is a polyatomic ion, you're going to break it apart from the other stuff that's attached to it, but you're not going to break the polyatomic ion apart from itself. So make sure that you keep those polyatomic ions um, as a unit when you're doing this step. The silver carbonate is going to stay solid, so we do not pull that apart at all. We just leave it alone. The last product, the sodium nitrate, needs to be broken apart. And again, because I have two sodium nitrates, that gives me two sodium ions and two nitrate ions. After we've done that step and broken it apart to form our ionic equation, we need to go through and see if there's anything that's exactly the same on the reactant and the product side. Those are the spectator ions that we need to take out because they're not changing chemically. So if I look back at my ionic equation with everything broken apart into ions except for my solid precipitate, I see that there are a couple of things that are identical on both sides of the equation. If they're identical, that means that they never did anything. They dissolved at the beginning, they remain dissolved at the end. Basically, they're just hanging out in the solution watching that silver carbonate form. The nitrates on both sides are exactly the same, as are the sodiums on both sides. So those are the spectator ions that are going to be removed from this equation. What's left in the ionic equation after we remove the spectator ions is our net ionic equation. It should be the precipitate on the product side, so that should be the only thing that's left on the product side. And then the ions that make it should be on the reactant side. So after we take out the sodium and nitrate spectator ions, what's left are the two silvers and the carbonate ion, which come together to form that solid silver carbonate product. You can always double check by going back and looking at your balanced chemical equation. If you have that precipitate identified correctly, that should be the only product left in your net ionic equation. And the ions that form that precipitate should be the only reactants left in your net ionic equation. Everything else that's completely soluble on both sides of the equation is a spectator and should be removed. All right, good luck.